some further thoughts on the issue of psychological continuity. Last time, we saw that both the disembodied organic brain, Yorick, and the mechanical duplicate, Hubert, participated in the psychological continuity of the original embodied mind of Dennett over there on the far left. Now, in case it is still not clear to some of you why you should not immediately assume that Yorick, the disembodied organic brain, is somehow much more authentically dented simply because the brain is, quote, original or organic, consider the following. Let's pretend that you are reading The Story of My Life, an autobiography written by Helen Keller while she was still in college, published in 1903 about her early life up to the age of 21. After you're finished reading it, you tell others about how much you had enjoyed reading this book. Well, did you read The Story of My Life? How can that be true if you did not read the original manuscript, probably punched in English braille, with suggestions and corrections in the margins by her agent, and so on? Obviously, you should say that that question is silly. Of course you've read the book. It doesn't matter that the edition you've read, which is now resting on your bookshelf, is brand new, having come off the press 110 years after the original publication. It is the book. It is the story, the narrative, of Helen Keller's early life story in her own words. Wouldn't it be silly to say that you had not read the story, or that the story you read was somehow inauthentic and not Helen Keller's story because the material on which the story was printed is not the original paper? In other words, that there is no physical continuity between the first edition and the edition in your hand, therefore the story in your book is somehow, quote, fake? That would be absurd. Clearly, what matters is not the physical continuity of the paper on which the story is printed, or else we should say that most of us have never read most of the books we think that we have read, that they were all also somehow fake. What matters here is the syntax between the words, what makes the narrative coherent and meaningful, it's the idea and content of that narrative that has remained numerically same across multiple publications. So, does it really matter whether or not the autobiographical information, which represents Dennis' memories from a first-person perspective, is stored in an organic brain or a digital brain? Does it matter whether you read the story of my life in paperback or as a digital PDF? In fact, to the extent that a digital archive is more stable and less likely to be susceptible to, quote, forgetting, isn't the digital machine brain of Hubert superior to Yorick? Personally, I think that if anything would lead to the inevitable division of the two personalities stored in these two different mediums, it would be that one is capable of forgetting and the other is not. Imagine how different your personality would be if you were incapable of forgetting anything, ever. Now, we don't want to push this analogy too far, but it does serve its purpose in illustrating how the physical platform is not where our focus should be when looking at the issue of psychological continuity. Unless a more reasonable argument in support of the organic brain can be found, such as the one alluded to here, in that the organic brain is able to forget some things, or maybe we should say it's unable to remember everything, we should not jump to the conclusion that the organic brain, Yorick, is somehow more authentically dented simply because it is organic or original.